Let's hope it stays that way. play finished? Some time ago, love. What happened? It was the bank manager. Oh, he did it. But we knew that from the very beginning. <laughs> what a waste of time. Is there nothing else on? Not anymore. It's after midnight. After midnight? I must have dropped off. That's what comes to trying to read and watch the box at the same time. Oh, I wasn't really watching. You should have called me, though, to switch it off. No need. Now I have my magic wand. Oh, I... Still. <laughs> What? If the Archbishop of Canterbury himself told him to stop raining, you'll still look out of the window to check. Probably. <laughs> I was going to get you a hot drink an hour oh, ago. I didn't feel like it anyway, love. Look, Molly, why don't you go off to bed? Hmm? You're tired out, love. Between Stone Park and me, you've been working 18 hours a day for the past six months. Oh, I'm fine. You are, but you could still do with a bit of rest. Don't worry about sitting up with me. I'll be all right. You go off to bed. I just feel like I'm a little sleep anyway. Oh, are you feeling a... much better? Just about nodding off. Oh, well, if you're sure, I'll just give you your medicine. Here you are, love. the day release scheme's the perfect answer. I agree. I wish there was some way we could extend it. Excuse me, madam, yes. but Mrs. Armitage called to say she'd be late in this morning, so I'll do the rounds with you. Ah, thank you, Mrs. Phillips. I gather her husband had another bad night. Apparently. Can't the doctors do anything for him? He's on drugs to relieve the pain in his spine, but they seem to be having less and less effect. And Mrs. Armitage has to cope all by herself. Our neighbour looks in from time to time. And Mrs. Armitage goes home at lunch times. Couldn't we do something to help, Miss Clark? Uh, I have suggested it once or twice, but all I get back is I'm not a welfare case yet, thank you. <laughs> yes, I can just hear her saying it. Late admission to hospital wing last night, Leslie Reed, South Wing. What was that? Oh, the girl just went hysterical, madam. Had to be put under sedation. South Wing again. Mm. I think I'll have a word with Miss Parrish. We'll talk about the day releases later. Very well. Thank you, Miss Parsons. Hello. Hello, you still. Address the governor as Madam Totty. You gave you permission to call me that. I don't remember as how we was ever properly introduced. That's enough, love. Well, some people have no idea of what's fitting. There's only one way to teach them a lesson. How nice to see you again, Miss Dowd. Perhaps we could have our little chat later. <laughs> I'm pleased to see you any time, madam. Good day to you then, Miss Dowd. Good day, madam. Some people know how to treat a lady. Know what's fitting. Oh, there's up no manners! All right, simmer down. Address her as madam, I will when I write her a letter. If I write her a letter. <laughs> Catch me writing her a letter. She's incorrigible. No sign of any improvement. Going from bad to worse, I'm afraid. That compulsion to grab someone's nose. It's just an extraordinary fixation. <laughs> an extraordinarily painful one, to judge from her victims. Mm. Still, she hasn't been put on report quite so often recently, Miss Parrish. Because the women leave her strictly alone and the officers have learned to take avoiding action. Mm. That's how we deal with so many of our problems, isn't it? Either by dodging them or ignoring them and hoping that one day they'll go away. That wasn't meant as a criticism, Miss Parrish. You know my feelings, Governor. It is pointless to give people like Totty Dowd a prison sentence. Punishment has no meaning for her, therefore it's not a deterrent. That's rather a large question to go into at the moment. Why isn't she at work? Oh, she's a liability in the workshops. Chef won't have her in his kitchens. There's nothing for her. Well, what about general cleaning? 
Oh, yes, but if I put her on cleaning all the time, she just turns violent. She says it's demeaning. Yes, I see you have your hands full. You had a late admission to hospital wing last night. Yes, mm -hmm. Leslie Reed. She was only kept overnight. How is she? She's back now, no sign of anything. What caused the outburst? Oh, frustration, tension, the usual build-up, I suppose. Anyway, she's ashamed of herself now. But no specific cause? No. Well, if there is, she's not talking about it. I see. Well, thank you, Miss Parrish. But there's no real problem on the wing. Problem? Well, I've noticed a higher incidence of reports, self-inflicted injuries and so forth, during the past month or so. Yes, that's true, madam. But you don't think they're related in any way? To one cause? No. If anything, the wing's been rather quiet of late. Thank you, Miss Parrish. Leslie Reed? Oh, yes, madam. Well, she's been excused work today, too. I think I'll have a word. Having a bit of trouble on the wing, then? No. No more than usual. Oh, yeah. Don't let me stop the good work. How are you? All right? Yes, madam. You're feeling better? I won't do it again, madam. I'm sorry I'll never do it again. You don't have to say sorry to me, Leslie. It's you we're concerned about. Now, what was it? What caused it? Oh, nothing, madam. Want to talk about it? I just thought about her watching me. Who? Nothing. Who? My mum, knowing I'm in here and everything. I just... I just... <laughs> yes, all right, Peter, all right. But how did I know she'd be so upset? A little common savvy, if you'll pardon my French. Well, I went very gently. Miss Parrish said she was unhappy. The strain of being inside had got too much for her. And she cracked. She's unhappy, yes, but more than that, Peter. That girl is frightened, very frightened. Frightened of what? I told you what you said about her mother. Oh, well, that's it then. I mean, that is the commonest syndrome amongst first offenders of her age and type. They don't think about the wrong they did society, but their parents. She's let them down. She'll never be able to face them again. Have you read her file? Not since she was admitted, no. Well, I've just been through it. Mm -hmm. Leslie's mother is dead. She died nearly eight years ago. Oh. Is that a fact? Right. Remind me. What's she in for? Theft. She worked for a babysitting agency. She stole from nearly everybody she worked for. Eventually someone reported her and it was all traced back. Typical envy thieving. Why should her employers apparently have so much and she so little? Come in. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Isn't it? Oh, yes, yes, of course. We're talking about Leslie Reed. Ah, yes. She's calmed down now, hasn't she? Largely, but she's still under some stress, it seems. Yeah, poor kid. Surprising, though. She's so shy and docile. She's the last person you'd expect to go bananas. Very clinically put. See, that's what puzzles me. Was it the stresses inside herself or part of a larger pattern? On the wing, you mean? Hers is by no means an isolated case on South Wing these days. Others take different forms, of course, but... Yes. Have you discussed it with Martha Parrish? She hasn't noticed anything, she says. Well, the wing officers don't entirely agree. According to Mrs Phillips, they're all a little uneasy. What do they put it down to? It's just a feeling. Nothing specific. So, there's not much we can do about it, is there? No. Except make a note of it and leave it to Martha. Well, I hope she's right. Was there something, by the way? Uh, yes, um, I was looking for the chief, actually. What made you think she'd find her here? Mrs Armitage is at home this morning. Oh, I saw her not 20 minutes ago. Yeah. She said she'd cut straight up to the hospital wing when she heard who was among the new admissions. Oh, we haven't had time to go through them yet. Who? Georgie Weeks. Old Mrs Weeks? Oh, I don't believe it. It's fact, though. Six months for pinching money out of handbags in the Buffet of King Cross Station. Mrs Weeks. <laughs> it seems she'd uh, nick a few bob and buy herself a drink, then find another sucker and buy another and so on. The old hand has obviously lost none of its cunning. By the time they nabbed her, she was nearly blotto. I never thought we'd see her back in here again. I'm sorry, I thought you'd know. She came here for a checkup before being assigned to a wing. It sounds to me as if it was deliberate again, to get back inside. Is she in a bad way? Not too good. It's not so much the booze she's consumed this time, it's all the stuff she put away before. Her heart's on the blink. I doubt if it'll last the rest of her sentence. Well, they told me you were poorly, and look at you. All set to enter a beauty competition as the world's most villainous grandmother. What? You'd walk it. Oh, it's good. 
It's good to see you, Chief. Yes, well, I wish I could say the same. You've let me down, Georgie. You've let us all down. I tried. Ever so hard. Honest, Chief. You managed to stay out half a year this time. More. Why didn't you keep it up? You were staying with that nice Mrs. Dobing. You've let her down, too. I thought you liked her. I did. I do. What happened, then? It all fell through. She was took bad, Chief, one night. Oh. She's been visiting one of the girls here. I heard she hadn't been in for a week or two. Yes, a stroke. I heard her calling me, but there was nothing I could do. So I ran to the neighbours and they sent for an ambulance. What, they took her off to hospital? Yes, I went to visit her every day. And she'd smile and I took her some flowers and she'd talk about the times we'd have when she'd come out. Yeah? Then one day, her niece come to the house. Oh, not nice. Not nice at all. She asked me how much rent I paid. And what was I going to do about the money owing to Mrs Dobin while she was in hospital? Did you give it to her? No fear. That's between me and Mrs Dobin. I said I'll settle with her. Then she said, the niece, that she was in charge now. And she was going to take Mrs Dobin to live with her and sell the house. No. Yes, but I live here, I said. Well, she said you'll have to find somewhere else, won't you? Be out by the end of the week. Didn't you go and see Mrs Dobing? Yes, I went straight round to the hospital. But she'd gone. They'd moved her already. So that was that. So she went to the station. She was going north, where she'd lived when she was first married. But the fare had gone up, and the little she had saved wasn't enough. So, you can imagine the rest. She went into the buffet and just happened to sit next to somebody with an open hand. Exactly. She took enough to make up the fare. Instead, she bought herself a drink, the first in Lord knows how long. It was so easy, she did it again and again. By the end, she was reeling about, practically helping herself to every handbag in the place. It's true. <laughs> I'm surprised the magistrate sentenced her. I wonder if he didn't fall off the bench laughing. Instead, he sent her here. Didn't he realise that to Georgie Weeks, Stone Park is the best hotel in London? No, it's not a hotel, Miss Parrish. It's home. Which, for the next six months, will be South Wing. Now, that's what I wanted to see you about. There is a completely unfounded impression that I'm always hard on Georgie Weeks. It is not true. I merely don't find old cons like her endearing or amusing. They're simply a nuisance. She'll behave herself this time. She'll have to. Anyway, there are no singles left. She'll have to share. Uh -huh. Who with? Nina Gregory or Totty Dowd. Totty Dowd? Oh, you couldn't wish that on anyone. Riff, riff! <laughs> Scum! Oh, no, you all! I've got your mask! Silly old nutcase ought to be locked out! It's only a bit of fun, can't you take a joke? They <laughs> wasn't laughing at me. No respect. Ah, oh, well, calm down. You don't want Scrooge to get nasty, do you? Scrooge's gonna bash her silly old nutcase. Leave her alone, can't you? Keep your nose out, whippersnapper! <laughs> hey! Uh, they didn't waste much time getting you back on the wing, Mrs. Weeks. No, sir. Oh, but please, Mr. Raleigh, couldn't I go back on North Wing? Who's been happiest on North Wing, that nice Miss Collins? Oh, it's all been booked up for months, Georgie. However, not to worry. I dare say at this very moment Miss Parrish is killing the fatted calf for you. Yes, just by looking at it. Hey. Now then, Georgie. No! Don't you touch her! Get your feet off! Don't touch her! 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 Let go! Charlotte Dowd! Whatever do you think you're doing? I'm surprised at you. That's no way to behave. Georgina, is that you? Is that a ladylike way to carry on? They were saying rude things to me, Georgina. Rude? That's no excuse. Now, where's your room? Then you go to it till you can learn to behave. Well, that's it.
That's enough then, ladies. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Come on, There is all of these things, cantankerous, incorrigible, a danger to herself and to others. With delusions of grandeur. Indeed. But the point is, what are we going to do about her? <laughs> what can we do? It hasn't already been tried. Apart from electrical shock treatment, and unfortunately, she's not bad enough for that. Oh, charming. Well, what else is there, Liz? I mean, let's face it, you haven't been able to help her conspicuously, have you? I wouldn't suggest medieval brutality, if that's what you're thinking of. <laughs> Thank you very much. The time has come for a little more constructive thinking. Oh, sorry, Governor. Sorry. How much of a disturbing influence is she? I get the feeling it's not necessarily as acute a problem as it was. Really? Well, according to Mrs. Armitage, Mrs. Weeks and Totty have known each other for years. I mean, they were doing time together when the rest of us were all still at school. That I can believe. Anyway, it seems that Georgie found a way of keeping Totty out of trouble all those years ago, and it still seems to work. She's been as quiet as a lamb since she and Georgie started to share a cell together. But how long can it go on? That's the point. We all know that when she's released, she'll be back inside within seven days, maximum. And by doing nothing, we encourage that to happen. Could always have a transfer. That'd just be passing the buck. I don't want the totty dad problem contained. I want it solved for the good of the whole wing. You really think she she's the unsettling influence? It could be. Is that your feminine intuition? Well, I'd prefer to call it my professional intuition, if you don't mind. Nothing specific, madam. Nothing you can put your finger on. Parson says that South Wing's been unnaturally quiet at times. Well, that's true, but it goes in cycles. Oh, how do you mean? Depending on the bunch you've got in. Sometimes they're a rowdy, noisy lot, and sometimes, like just now, they're more self-absorbed, withdrawn. There is tension at the moment. More than normal? Oh, yes, madam. Sometimes it's like static electricity. Mrs. Armitage says it makes the hair on the back of her neck tingle. I'd like to get her impressions. She's gone off her mind. Yes, I realise that, Mrs. Phillips. But you can't think of any real reason? Afraid not, madam. Thank you, Mrs. Spencer. They don't mind you coming home early? Well, work a full day. Just not unpaid overtime. You used to be late home always. More fool me. Oh, come on, Molly. Don't pretend you don't like your work anymore. Well, of course I do. It's just that I don't want to... Uh, what is it? I don't want to live to work. I'd rather work to live. Get that of a max box. Christmas cracker, more like. <laughs> it's true, though. We've wasted an awful lot of time we could have spent together. All because of some crisis, real or imaginary, at the prison. They're not often imaginary. More often than we care to admit. The trouble you expect just vanishes. That's because you anticipated, prevented from happening. That's your job. How come you know so much about my job? Because you talk about it so much. Yes, I do. Oh, yes, you do. And I encourage it. I like to know if anything's bothering you. I like to think that maybe I can help a little, give advice. You do, love. Like this business on South Wing, it sounds the reason it can't be because of that... Uh... What, Totty Dowd? Why not? Well, a situation like that, she'd act more like a, a safety valve, somebody for everybody else to be against, let off steam. The pressure would never be because of her. That's exactly what I think. I'll fetch your supper. Oh. Ted, I thought you were feeling uh, better. Uh, I didn't have my pills, that's all. But Mrs Martin would give you them when she came at five o'clock, didn't she, come? No, and uh, the bottle was too far away. I just couldn't reach it. Yeah. Give me another one, love. They're very strong. They don't stop the pain anymore. Just take the edge off. They only last half the time they used to. I can't understand why Mrs. Martin didn't come in as usual. Well, maybe one of the kids is ill or something. It doesn't matter. Leave the bottle near her tomorrow. Make sure I can reach it. Yes. Yes, of course, love. Come on, get them down now. That's what I call a nice drink. Cocoa. Of its kind, yes. You can't go wrong with cocoa. Not like you can with tea. 
My mother made the best cup of tea in Houndsditch. My father used to fetch it back from Ceylon. Solenka. No! Ceylon. D did I ever tell you he he was a, a first mate on a, on a sailing ship? Yes, she had mentioned it from time to time. She made a lovely cup of tea. This is cow cow. Why don't you come on centre cleaning with me tomorrow? Still the cushiest job in the nick. Menial. Menial occupation. I'm surprised at you. But all ladies clean their own homes today. Kind of get help, you see. Shame. And this is our home, sort of. So there's nothing wrong in cleaning it, is there? Mm, I suppose not, if you put it like that. No. Not too much, so, eh? No. Not too much. <laughs> Would you like some more cocoa? Give us five minutes. I'm busy at the moment. No. Don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. Your husband and kids will be waiting for you. He got his new job, didn't he, eh? I said five minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. Oh, that's all right, Kitty. Don't disturb yourself. I wanted a word with you, but they don't... <laughs> No, not for me. Thank you okay. very much, all the same. Well, it was very fortunate you were there, Miss Barrett. Right. Not you. fortunate, Governor. Since we're so short of staff, I oh, often stay late about? one or two evenings a week. Mm -hmm. oh, come off it, Martha. I don't think you were just there by chance. Very well. I had heard that Mrs. Marshall had taken the extraordinary step of questioning the officers on my wing. There's no reason why I should not, Miss Barrett. Anyway, since you were so determined that a situation was developing on South Wing, I decided to judge for myself, yeah. one way or the other. Yeah. It's a good job you did. Excuse me, will you? Can I give you a little more? Well, thank you very much. And you? Well, thank you all for coming at such short notice. I've been meaning to arrange more informal gatherings of the senior staff to discuss joint problems in a reasonably relaxed atmosphere. So let us look upon this as a first such meeting. You really think there is a crisis, Governor? I certainly think one is approaching. And in a less efficiently run wing, it could well be more obvious and more serious by now. No, it's all right. I'll get it. Oh, thank you. Now, what I'm saying is, we may have a potentially dangerous situation here, and I think we should talk about it. Oh, Mrs. Oh, Armitage. Mrs. Phillips rang me about the meeting. I thought perhaps I'd better come along. So, collectively, those neuroses sparking off from each other could create exactly that explosive situation. Well, in that case, the only answer would be to split up all the women on all the wings and shuffle them round every so Of course, a lot of unnecessary work. And be very unsettling. Here, here. What exactly happened tonight? Well, as far as I can gather, Nancy tried to steal some sweets and a tin of cigarette tobacco from one of the other cells. Nancy Walsh? Yeah. She'd egg someone else on, not do it herself. I'd have agreed with you, Chief, up till tonight. Just another symptom. I'm sorry, but how do I fit into this? I want us to act quickly, and we need all the information we can get. Oh, wait a minute. I thought I'd made my position perfectly clear. A lot of the women trust you, Liz. And I will not abuse that trust. I've just been through the experience of being branded as an official informer, a grass. And it has taken me months to win back the little trust they give me. During that time, I could barely function. Don't expect me to risk the whole work of my department again. Uh, Miss Clark, correct me if I'm wrong, but the main concern of your department is the well-being of the women, both when they leave prison and while they are here, and if they are being seriously affected by some malignant source, then it is your duty to help to isolate it and deal with it. 
You're quite sure that there is um, one source? Previous experience has shown us that's most often the case, Doctor. Well, what I think it... Oh, sorry, Chief. It's all right, Mr. Phillips, go on. Well, nobody's mentioned it yet, but to me, all the incidents seem to add up. It's like the situation you get with the tobacco barons. Well, they don't exist in women's prisons. Well, why not, Mr. Radley? I mean, tobacco's a currency here, too, to buy favours and affection. If somebody could build up a big enough store, she could control the whole wing. And anyone who borrowed from her or crossed her would have nowhere to hide. She'd make their life a misery. Yes, but for that you'd need an organisation, heavies to enforce repayment and so on. We'd have spotted that by now. Yes, but don't forget, as you said, Mr Radley, it is a woman's prison and the enforcement may be more subtle. The currency needn't necessarily be tobacco. It could be sweets, makeup, anything. What are you suggesting, Chief? A search for a start, straight in, no warning. Oh, won't that make the women more anxious? Good. Then one of them may be prepared to talk. Everybody out! Nothing. Not much. Just the usual, madam. Packet of tea, a couple of things nicked from the workshops. Well, we knew it was a long shot. I see. All right, then. Second line of attack. I don't very well the governor to say that. It's never just that easy, is it, Chief? No. If it were, anybody could do the job. It's, um, it's your interview with the home office tomorrow, isn't it, Mr Radley? Yeah. Well, then I'd like to wish you the very best of luck. Mm. I suppose in your case it's just a formality. Oh, don't you believe it, Chief. I've been up before, you know. I believe there are several others being considered. Well, you must get a good night's rest. Appear your efficient best tomorrow. Thanks. By the way, you look a bit bushed yourself, Chief. How are things at home? Oh, ticking along. We'll manage. Will you look at that? to start thinking about finding a job for you when you get out. That's just over three months to go, isn't it? Yes. And somewhere to stay. I've been to you see your father. He wouldn't want me. But he does. That he does. He's realised that what happened may be partly his fault. He wants to make it up to you. He's afraid you may feel he resented you after your mother's death. I didn't want her to die. She can't say that. How could she? Leslie, she's dead. Right, thank you for coming, Kitty. Uh, sit down, please. Now, um, Miss Parrish tells me you have a lot of friends on the wing. A few, yes. I'd say quite a few. The women come to you for advice? They all have their troubles. I'm a good listener. What kind of troubles, Kitty? But we're not asking you to betray any confidences, just in general. With the older ones, it's what's to become of them. Husbands, children. With the younger ones, it's boyfriends. Sex, more sex. But nothing specially troubling them at the moment. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not sure, miss. Mind I realise some of it was up. What's wrong? We were hoping you could tell us. It looks as though your theory of collective neurosis is right. Yes, well. You've been through the individuals? All the possibles. See, I never thought she was your original evil influence, but I do think that Totty died is a major factor in the unrest on South Wing. So, rejoice, behold. A miracle. What? I persuaded the East Surrey to take her in for a period of observation and possible treatment. Never. How did you do it? Well, I used your argument. She should never have been in prison in the first place. Interesting challenge, older woman. Took a deal of wire pulling, I can tell you. I'm sure it did. But it's not necessary to send her to an outside hospital. Not necessary. Well, she's quite changed, madam. She's completely settled down now she's sharing with Georgie Weeks. <laughs> it's the blind leading the blind. Well, you should see them together, Doctor. Yes, I'll take your word for it, but surely you realise that that is not a cure. 
And I don't like to say this because I know that you're fond of her. We may not have Georgie with us very long. Fair enough. But I still don't think you should split them up. For whose sake? Totties or Mrs. Weeks? It may only be for a few days, just long enough perhaps to break the pattern of events on South Wing. <laughs> Dr. May. Yes? Yes, she's here. It's Fuji. Oh, thank you. Hello, yes. But when? Is he? Oh, thank you. No, no, I quite understand. But he is all right. Yes, yes, I'll come home straight away. Will you still be there, Doctor? Thank you, yes. Your husband? He took a... He's had an overdose of medicine. I I've got to go home, madam. Yes, of course, Mrs Armitage. I'll drive you. No, no. No, no arguments. I'm going to take you. You're all right, Mrs Armitage. Don't worry, I'll, I'll tell the oh, government. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for coming. Sorry. all this bother. David, it really was accidental, wasn't it? Yes. But I've been thinking it hadn't been Mrs. Martin hadn't come. Maybe it would have been for the best. Ted, don't ever say that. Please. the old story. Ted, Mr Armitage, took some pills for the pain. They didn't work, so he took some more and fell into a kind of doze. When he woke up, he was a bit confused, so he took some more, and maybe some more after that. Fortunately, he threw up quite a lot, and the neighbour found him in time. But he's all right? Weak, but yes, he's all right. Must you? Now, don't lecture me, Peter. Not tonight. How's Mrs Armitage? Very distressed. I mean... Well, it could be all over. It really was accidental. Oh, yes, I'm quite sure of that. Ted is not the kind of man to run away from things. Isn't there someone who could stay with him more? Isn't there a, a, a daughter? She's a psychotherapist at Durham. His own doctor's convinced he can't be allowed to stay at home any longer with nobody to look after him. He'll have to be taken into care. How long for? Permanently. Oh. The pain may go, but he's going to be bedridden for the rest of his life. Poor Mrs Armitage. What about us, Susie? Oh, come on, there's something wrong. There has been for some time. If it's my fault, I'd like to know why. No, it's not your fault, Peter. It's just that I find it difficult to work closely with someone I'm attached to. It needn't be. No, I suppose not. But I'm also the governor, and I'm not very good at combining the two. Sometimes I go too far. Not to show partiality. It might help if we could come out into the open. No, Peter. <laughs> so we just go on as we are? Mm. Well, why not? We're both adult. We keep our individuality. We give and take what we need from each other. But I didn't just... I didn't mean something more permanent. Yes, I realise that. But I'll have to be very sure before I make a permanent relationship again. But you don't rule it out altogether? Oh, that's something. Well, how did the board go? Well, I know it's meant to be bad luck to talk about it, but I think rather well. Good. Of course, they didn't say much, but the reaction seemed more than favourable. Morning. It's uh, quite a small prison in the Midlands, but it's due for expansion, and they seem to think I have all the necessary qualifications as a potential governor. Oh, I'm quite sure you have. Of course, a lot will depend on the uh, reports from the previous governors here. Well, Mrs Boswell's and Mrs Forrester's were glowing, I know. And yours at home. 
Oh, I gave you the highest possible recommendation by saying I didn't think we could carry on here without you. Ah, oh, Mrs. Armitage. All ready for reports, madam. Thank you. Well, that won't help much. No, I'm not gonna go. Oh, come along. No, I'm not gonna go you? there. It's not a nice place. People are looking at you. It's rude. Oh, nonsense, Totty. Now, come along. No. Yes, no, you can't make me. We shall be going. Do you? Mm. Nice place in the country. Soft beds. No screws. Paradise. <laughs> Why, why, why don't you come and all, Georgie? Why can't Georgie come and all? I haven't been specially selected like you have. Only special persons allowed to go there. Ladies. Yeah, they all well, we have to have special places. Yes, you yes see. that's right. And ladies don't keep people waiting, so come along. Sorry you can't come and all, Georgie, but you haven't been invited. Come on. Perhaps now we'll get a bit of peace for a while. Oh, don't say that, Miss Parsons. She's the only friend I've got left, apart from the Chief. Right, take her away. Well, that's it then. Nancy just saw a tin of tobacco lying unguarded and went in to get it. The other girls were punishing her. Nothing sinister, nothing planned. Yes. That's the last of the reports, madam. There aren't any applications. There you are. Could I keep you for a moment? I'm glad that you're here too, Mr. Radley. I'd like a word. So, I shall be in charge of the officer's duty. Ross's, as Mrs. Armitage clearly doesn't have the time. Which has rather had her hands full. Yeah, it's been very unfortunate. It could hardly have been worse. I didn't intend any criticism of the chief, you understand, Miss Parrish. Naturally not. Though I must admit, as chief too, it has been difficult having to make all the decisions lately and then having to have them approved. Difficult, yes. Still, won't be for much longer. How do you mean? Mrs Armitage is leaving. She's what? handed in her notice. Leaving Stone Park? Leaving the service. But where? Quite soon, I believe. An early retirement to look after her husband. Why didn't she tell me? Oh, it's only just been decided to take effect as soon as possible. So, you'll find yourself in charge of the uniform staff. That is, until the successor is confirmed. I thought that was what you most wanted. I, I did. But I thought the chief would be here forever. Excuse me, Miss yes. Parrish. Oh, it's Georgie Weeks. She seems to have collapsed. Yes, well, it's her heart. I told you about it when she came in. Well... Don't blame yourself, Peter. No, it could have happened any time. But you can save her, can't you, Doctor? Not this time, no. Would it be in order to see her? She was asking for it. Yeah, but you understand only for a moment or two, and don't let her talk. How long has she got? A few hours at the most. Hours? It could be within the next ten minutes. I knew you'd come. Don't try to talk, Georgie. Nothing to save me breath for. So just still alive and kicking while you're talking. Just you rest. Plenty of time to rest. If you see Totty, tell her I asked after her. You'll be there to welcome her back? No. That's not your style, come on. Not like Georgie Weeks to give in. Not giving in, Chief. I'm beat. Never. I know it. Doctors didn't have to tell me. So far. I'll leave a note for Totty. I might not be here either. You see, I'm moving on too. Me too. I'm retiring. I'm going to stay at home and look after my husband. So my Ted. You've decided at last. At last. It's a stone park. I'll just have to get on without either of us. Without you, it'll, it'll fall down. <laughs> you 
You once told me that I'd served a longer sentence here than anyone, except yourself. I think I've done enough. You manage. You, you won't want for anything. I want it like that. Oh, the department will see me all right. Ted's got a bit of a pension. We'll manage. Of course you will. Know something? What I told you about Mrs. Dobin, not true. She has gone away, but only on an holiday to stay with her niece. Nice girl. Georgie. One they called the ambulance for was me. Told me at the hospital, my ticker was packing it in. Wanted me to stay there. And you came here instead? Only place I want to be when I die. Shall I tell you something? That's the first time you've ever fooled me. Did I? Did I really, Chief? Oh, that kitty too. Kitty Fenner. Told her about my sister in Birmingham. How I wanted to be with her. That's what she'll do. She said you'll go and live with her. Fat lot you know. I said she passed over years ago. Kitty didn't like that. Why not? I'm not a grass. We're just talking, Georgie. You can tell me. She's got them all believing in her. Oh, Lizzie Brombra told better fortunes in a teacup. Ah, can see into the future, can she? All she knows is what they've already told her. They believe it because they want to believe it. They swallow anything. Messages from beyond, table turning. Cross her palm with silver, do they? She'd take anything, even promises. Make a bed, fetch and carry, do what she wants or she won't let the good things happen. See those kids? Can't get enough. Like a drug. Yeah. She's all right to those she likes, but the others... Makes their lives a misery. Just playing with them. Con artist, that what she is. What was I saying? Just talking, Georgie. Getting old. Have to be careful. Or I might shop somebody by mistake if I'm not careful. Not you. You'll never make a mistake. You... you won't forget me. I promise. Well, I always... Funny, I can't remember. Just try to sleep. Something I wanted to tell you. Doesn't matter. It's cold. You always was the best from the first day you come here. to be frightened of. I remember. My husband was a boxer. I was born in Camberwell.
So Kitty got in touch with your mother for you, and your mother spoke to you through her? Yes. What did she say? Bad things. What sort of things? About your father? Yes. And what else? <laughs> Leslie, Kitty made it up. She made all these things up. She couldn't have. She knew things only Mum could have known. Which you told her some time before. Kitty said Mum would be angry if I didn't do what she wanted. What did she want? I wouldn't do it. Kitty said Mum would come at night and punish me. She'd come from her grave and touch me. I didn't want to see her. Oh, keep her away. Keep her away. The good first or the bad? Just the good tonight, Kitty. You pick more black cards than red. You know what that means. Well, pick again. Ah, don't make no difference. You can't change it now. Oh, please, let me change them. I'll pay you at the end of the week, I promise. You said that before, Nancy. Oh, please. You gave me so much to look forward to last time. I was so lucky. I can't lose it all. It costs more to change your luck. Friendly game of pontoon? Kind of patience, madam. Oh, you must teach me sometime. Miss Parrish wants to see you, Nancy. Read any good poems lately? I don't know what you're talking about, madam. I think you do. You work in the laundry, don't you? Yes, chief. Have you ever seen these before? Never. In practical terms, they must represent months of payment to the women here. Now, conning the wing was really quite clever. But what I don't understand is why you had to spoil it all by being so viciously cruel. It was power, of course. Mm. That and a kind of perverted jealousy against the younger women who had everything to look forward to in life, everything that Kitty Fenner had missed. Yeah, she had us all fooled, didn't she? What had happened to her? Nothing much. There wasn't any law against telling fortunes. Of course, they'll get her on general charges, but nothing with a punishment to equal the misery that she's caused. Don't you need to be protected from the other women? <sighs> they won't dare lay a finger on her, just in case she has got the powers she claimed. Of course, in the old days, we... Well... You've heard Totty Diaries have sent back. Oh, she only went for observation, didn't she? One look was enough, I suppose. Yeah. So the buck gets passed again. I mean, I know I can't do anything for her. Oh, it's days like this when one realises one is never going to have more than the pitifully small number of successes. So very few one can permanently and genuinely help. Permanently? The miracle that so seldom happens. I have high hopes for you, Miss Clark. I beg your pardon? You're learning. Oh, now, look, just because you're... I never thought I'd hear myself say this. <laughs> but I'll miss you. She's gone then. Yes, Oh, well, uh, I've my room to myself now, will I? Well, see, you know, it's incredible. She's like a kid all the way here. Yeah? Want to know everything that had happened. I often wonder if she takes anything. Mrs. Armitage had been there to see it. We should seen it myself. Ah, well. Stone Park will never be the same without her. And I dare say the same thing's been said about every chief officer for the past hundred years. <laughs> and every governor. By the way, what did you say about me in your report? My report? Ah, oh, yes. I was prevented from finishing, wasn't I? I said I was afraid that we needed you too much here. But then I realised that, largely thanks to you, the prison was running so efficiently that a new deputy could step in with a minimum disturbance. You'll get it. Cheeky devil. That's insubordinate, Mr Radley. You won't prevent it from finishing at all. 
You just stopped there deliberately. You shouldn't really have asked, did you? <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night.